let's start this one over here now. Technology is always so much fun. Okay, and we're starting this now. Okay, everything is up and running and working and going smoothly. So we're actually gonna make four different kinds of holiday cookies today. I'm gonna start with um, my three ingredient shortbread cookies because who doesn't love shortbread? I'm one of those people who I get those huge containers of shortbread cookies. I enjoy them forever. Uh, but the thing is, I learned that shortbread cookies are actually super easy to make. Uh, and so we're gonna do that now. And these are actually brown sugar shortbread cookies. Most shortbread cookies are made with white sugar. I like that extra depth or warmth that you get from the brown sugar. So I make mine with brown sugar, but you can use this exact same recipe using uh, white sugar instead. So we are going to start with some butter. If I can get my camera to change. <laughs> so hello from Michigan, Janet, hello, hello, OG Gamer. Okay. so. We're gonna start with some butter and we're gonna beat that. We just wanna break that up and get it nice and soft. We're gonna add some brown sugar and beat it some more. Now you're gonna to wanna to go and make sure, even with the bowl scrapers like I have here, you're gonna to wanna to go in and make sure that you get that butter um, completely incorporated with the sugar. Okay, that is looking good. And now the third ingredient, three ingredient drop bread, right? One, two, three is flour. So we're gonna add that now. And because I don't want the flour going crazy, I am going to toss a lid on really fast. And you can see this actually becomes a pretty uh, crummy dough, I think. My assistant might have um, high altitude this for me, meaning she put extra sugar in, or I mean flour in, which we actually don't need for this recipe. So what I'm going to do, this is a great, uh, this is a great way to show off some troubleshooting. Now it's supposed to be crumbly. It's supposed to be uh, a little bit crumbly, but it's not supposed to be quite uh, this crumbly. I can push it and hold it into shape, but it is breaking really easily. Uh, and so I'm going to add just a little bit of extra butter. So luckily, I always have softened butter on hand. <laughs> I keep a couple boxes of butter on my counter so that they are soft and easy to work with because I bake literally every day. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. Hello, 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 hello from Columbia. Oh, you made my double chocolate cake recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello from Alabama. You one of your favorites, hello from New Jersey. Hello, ooh, chocolate peanut butter, no bake cookies. Tammy, I love those. I make bars and my sister make balls um but yeah cookies okay so this uh, already had two cubes of butter in it but it's a little bit too floury so i'm actually going to add i think i'm going to i'm going to add two tablespoons and if that's not enough then we'll add another two tablespoons put the lid back on because it's going to spray everywhere All right, that's still a little crumbly, so I'm gonna add two more tablespoons. There we go. Now it's still crumbly, but as you can see, that's actually going to hold together a lot better, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this out onto the counter now, and we're going to shape it. Okay. So now comes the fun of getting everything off the counter. <laughs> it's always nice when you have more than one counter in your kitchen so that you don't have to constantly be cleaning up your same spot over and over and over again. So we're gonna move, use the Bosch again in a minute, so I'm just gonna put that out of the way for now. Pull these whisks out. And, oh, these scrapers. Yeah. 
and I'm actually going to turn this out onto the counter. Don't forget to scrape anything that might be in the bowls. Okay. Hey, sweetheart. I'm trying to get my daughter to come in here and clean that bowl for me so I could use it for the next recipe. All right, so you can see how much better this is coming together than it did before. So that's great. We're just gonna need this for just a little bit, make sure everything's well incorporated. Hey, can you wash that bowl and those whisks for me real fast? Yes. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to get a cookie tray that I've already lined with parchment paper. And we're just going to bring this over to here and try to get all the little extras. And now we're going to um, flatten it. So you can just flatten it with your hands or, okay, can you do it a little bit quieter? <laughs> okay. Oh, and I just made a huge mistake. I'm sure you guys can all guess what I just did. I did not put um, flour on my rolling pin, so now my cookie's sticking to everything. Let's try this again. There we go. Now usually I just kind of pat it into place, but that can sometimes take a little bit of time. And we want to get these on the fairly flat side. Oh. <laughs> I got too much over on this side. And pull some off and bring some over here. All right, that's looking better. Okay, so does anybody else love uh, shortbread cookies? Angel, Nelly, Anna, Samantha, Natalie, hello. It's good to, I guess, see you. See is probably not the right word. I'm never quite sure what the right word is when it comes to this. All right, so that's about even. And it's just under a quarter of an inch, I would say. And now I'm gonna mark lines. So you can take um, you can take the back of a knife and score this shortbread into the shapes that you're going to later cut it into. It'll make cutting later easier. Or I'm just gonna take my bench scraper because that's gonna be easy. Thank you, sweetheart. You're so I'm actually gonna. Cut a little bit of that off and fill it in over here so you can get better shapes later. Okay, so I'm gonna score little lines. And I'm trying to do this semi-evenly, but also trying to hurry so don't waste too much of your time. All right, and then we're gonna do the same. Oh, my thing won't fit that way. I guess we're gonna go back to using the back of the knife. I didn't think about that. So score, 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 and score. Now, if I was really being paranoid about this, I would cut this excess off and like try to build it up over here. In fact, we might just, might as well do that now just so I can get as many uh, nice shaped cookies out of this as possible. Let's see. And this dough is great because it can kind of handle this manhandling that I'm doing uh, to it. <laughs> Some doughs are really sensitive and they can't handle that, but this one, this is a great dough because it can just kind of be pressed back into place this way. All right, let's go back to marking these. Now you don't have to do this, but we are gonna cut these when they're warm. And so by scoring them beforehand, it actually makes cutting them later easier because your knife already has like a nice guide. And now I'm gonna poke some fork holes into this. And again, these are more for looks than they are for necessity in the baking of these shortbread bars. You can also pat this into a circle and cut uh, or score wedges 
if you like wedges. And you can also just make these into balls and flatten them a little with the bottom of a cup and turn them into actual cookie shapes. So now I'm going to put this in the oven at 350 and they're going to bake for about 30 minutes. So we're going to work on the other cookies while these bake. Okay, first off, I'm going to clean up my mess because there's nothing worse than having mess. I don't want everything washed. This, the bowl is great. Oh, yes, you're right. I do want those. Okay. And next up, we are going to make my mom's favorite, which are coconut macaroons. Now, these are not the same thing as macarons, right? The little sandwich cookies. These are those coconutty, chunky deliciousness. So we're going to start. <laughs> I just hit myself in the eye. <laughs> we're going to start with the bowl and a whisk. You don't need a mixer for these cookies, which is great. Oh my gosh. Could I get dorkier? I don't know that I could. <laughs> oh, seriously. Tell me I'm not the only one who's a total dork sometimes. Just, yeah, takes talent. Okay, so uh, first step. All right, Natalie, you put on plastic wrap so it's more easy to work with. That's a great idea. Mackenzie, you love baking. I'm so glad. Hello from New York. Uh, oh, that is, this is a Bosch Universal Mixer. It's amazing. Flyboy, no kids today. Tuesday is actually their day with their, their, day with their dad, so, okay. We're gonna start with egg whites and um, oop. And thank you. I'm glad that you like my new blue hair color. I did this for family pictures. Um, we're gonna actually, and then we're gonna add our sugar and a little bit of flour. And then we're just gonna whisk this together. We want to completely get these, uh, this sugar and the flour completely incorporated with the egg whites. We don't want any chunks before we add our uh, coconut. Now I've seen a couple recipes where they actually take this mixture and they uh, heat it up like over a double broiler before they add the coconut, uh, but my recipe doesn't do that, it's super easy. Now sometimes I like to hold it here, I feel like I get a better grip when you're really trying to whisk something. And uh, every time I hold something like this, I tend to sway as if I had a paint piece still. A uh, habit, five kids, all right. And we want this to be nice and ribbony and luscious. Luscious is one of my favorite words. And then we're gonna add the coconut. So the tip for the coconut, when I first started making these, I just bought my coconut at the grocery store. So I just got the, um, the flake coconut at the grocery store, but that's sweetened coconut. And these cookies turned out super sweet. And um, that, that coconut at the grocery store tends to be stringy, like longer strings, and so the cookies didn't just bite and break evenly. And then somebody introduced me to the unsweetened uh, flaked coconut, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's much, much, much smaller. It doesn't have any sugar coating it, so it's not sweet, and this is a great texture for these cookies. I'm just gonna pour that in there and stir it together. Now, I'm gonna switch over to a spatula, because that is gonna be easier than this whisk. Oh, there we go. And we just want to get everything wet and incorporated together. So I love that this one doesn't need a mixer, because you really are only getting the whisk, the bowl, uh, the spatula, and then we're gonna use a cookie scoop you don't have to though. Uh, and that's all that we get dirty for these cookies, which is awesome. All right, nice and wet and incorporated. Can you see that texture? The texture is awesome. This is perfect. Okay, so I'm going to grab a cookie scoop and a cookie tray. And you can use a couple different sizes of cookie scoops. Um, I have probably six sizes myself. Um, so this is like a medium and this is a small and uh, we're gonna go with mediums today. But if you like small cookie scoops, you can go ahead and use that too. It's not a big deal. There's not really a right or wrong here. All right, 
So I make sure that my cookie scoop gets nice and full by pressing it against the bowl and then I scrape it flat. I have this great flat surface. And then I bring it over here. Now if it's a little bit too broken, you can fix it. You can even ball it if you want to. Um, I just don't find that that's necessary for these. Um, I feel like just this is enough. Just kind of push that in together. All right. Oh, sometimes the scoop likes to flip on itself. Um, all right, so now's a great, while I scoop a bunch of these, uh, now's a great time to answer some questions. Um, let's see. Renee, you'd be great on cooking shows. Thank you. I would love a cooking show. I actually did a Food Network Halloween Baking Championship back in 2015, maybe? I think it's been a while. Um, it was super fun. I loved it. I would totally do something again. Um, I would prefer having my own show versus a competition show just because it was stressful. Like, what you see is what you get. It was legit timed and, and crazy and we didn't know what we were doing beforehand, uh, but it was super awesome. And my, um, uh, all the people that I competed with were still really good friends and so love, love talking to each other and supporting each other and checking on each other and stuff like that. So we keep planning on trying to get together, but we all live so far apart, it doesn't happen. Someday, someday it will. Um, hello, Arlene. Okay, I answered what kind of mixer it is. I answered where the kids are. Um, live, yes, I am live. Uh, oh, you love watching me, glad you get to see me live again. Thanks, Katie. I appreciate that. I'm glad you like my hair color. So we did family pictures this weekend. I am a huge believer in family pictures, no matter what you look like. I've always done them. Uh, I tend to do them in the fall every year, and I think I've missed, since my oldest, who's 17, was born, I think I've only missed like four years, so I'm pretty good about it. Um, I even did family pictures the year that my youngest was born, and he was like three weeks old, so I was like super not looking hot, but I just didn't want to miss feel like it's really important no matter what you look like to keep those family pictures going. I always wish that I'd had more from my growing up years so I don't want my kids to ever think that way. All right so here we go. I've done this tray and we're going to add this to the oven because they also cook at 350 degrees. These actually cook so I have a little bit left as you can see so if I could probably put these a little bit closer and get another row but we're just going to throw these in for now. So these also cook at 350 degrees, uh, but they only bake for 12 minutes. So, oh, I my racks do I? <laughs> oh. Get this open. Move my rack down. Oh, those brown sugar shortbread are looking good. Okay, now normally I would say don't open the oven when you're cooking, but um, I wanted to get that in. So. those in as well. Wash my hands on the counter again and we will move on to the next cookie. You can see those, those macarons, mac macarons are super, super fast and easy as were the shortbread cookies. Now I make plenty of holiday food that is not super fast and super easy. I have done videos here in the past. Uh, some of my most popular have been my homemade eggnog, which is always amazing. Love homemade eggnog. And, um, Last year I did a live making my homemade almond roca toffee sticks dipped in um, chocolate. And let's see what else have we made. Four different kinds of fudge. And I have links down below in the description box of um, on YouTube of all of those other ones. And if you're on Facebook, you can just go to my blog and look at the Christmas tab. And there's tons of stuff there. Okay, next up we are making one of my favorites and that is uh, Vanilla bean soft sugar cookies. So every time someone says sugar cookies, I always think, I always thought in the past of the cutout sugar cookies, which I also did a video of last year. Uh, you know, the dough, you roll it out, you cut it, it holds its shape, you bake it, you frost it, super fun. That's the only sugar cookies I've ever really considered. And then I was searching on Pinterest, as I'm sure we all do, uh, and I was kind of looking for just a simple, different cookie and I came across somebody's soft sugar cookies that were just balls that were flattened and rolled in sugar and like they didn't need any frosting um, and I was like huh I love slightly sweet slightly crunchy but soft cookies I'm gonna give these a try um, and I did and I liked them and then I of course I tweaked them <laughs> 
and I made them my own. Uh, and instead of rolling them in normal sugar, I rolled them in vanilla sugar, which I also have a video of, which is amazing. I love vanilla sugar. So these would be good rolled in like lemon sugar or vanilla sugar or cinnamon sugar, any of those flavored sugars. And that's going to bring these cookies that extra oomph that they want. So, so good. Uh, and these are one of those cookies that people are like, really? Because they're just so simple looking. And then they try them and they're amazing if I do say so myself. So first up, I'm gonna move my Bosch out of the way again because I forgot we're gonna mix up the dry ingredients in a separate bowl first. So let's get that going. So I have um, flour. This is all purpose flour. In any recipe, if it doesn't specify a flour, it means all purpose. Okay, and then uh, baking powder and salt. Let me get my measuring spoons out somewhere. I always have to double check. Oh, these are the wrong ones. So I have two sets of measuring spoons and this one is two teaspoon pinch, two thirds teaspoon. Like it's really weird measurements. And I have totally in the past accidentally used like the biggest one of that. Uh, which is two teaspoons and totally messed up recipe because it wasn't a tablespoon like I thought it was. All right, so this is going to be one teaspoon of baking powder. Now remember, if your recipe has any acids in it, you want to use baking soda. If it doesn't have any acids, you want to use baking powder because baking powder has a cream of tartar in it, which balances the base of the baking soda that's in it the way that an acid in another recipe balances that base. So, that's it. And then salt, just a quarter teaspoon salt. Uh, and remember, salt is a flavor enhancer, so this shouldn't taste like salt. The salt should just bring out the other flavors that are part of the cookies, like vanilla. Salt and vanilla are both just amazing um, flavor enhancers. Vanilla just happens to also be a flavor in and of itself. All right. And we're going to whisk that together until it's nice and incorporated. Uh, Marion Davis, hello from North Georgia. Hello. Oh, sorry, Omaha, Paradise Roads from Georgia, hello. Arlene, love you very much. Oh, that's so sweet, thank you so much. Uh, Cindy, I do have a good sugar cookie cutout recipe. Um, mine is an old family recipe that uses sour cream. It's amazing, it's on the blog, it's on YouTube. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Along with my favorite uh, frosting recipe to go along with that. Uh, Abby, egg, uh, eggnog is good. I agree. Uh, hi, Ashley. Thanks. You are welcome. Okay. So, uh, easy for the coconut. Yes. Lady DX. It is that easy for coconut macarons. Once they're out and cooled, we're actually going to melt some chocolate and dip it in them and stuff like that. But kind of a personal preference. I like coconut and chocolate together, but you don't have to do that. Um, you are very informative. Thanks for the tips. You are so welcome, Anna. Thank you for, for commenting watching. Okay, so we have our dried uh, ingredients ready, and now we're going to mix our butter, some shortening, and some sugar. So I always get asked about uh, shortening. People are like, well, you're a from scratch cook, and you like are super anti things like margarine. Ugh. Um, so why would you use shortening? Or I get asked, why do you use corn syrup? Um, and it's actually, there is a time and a place for all these ingredients, right? Even margarine was created for a reason. I don't know why, but it was. Um, just kidding, I don't know why. But, uh, so butter has a great flavor, but it has a different melting temperature. And so if you just use butter in these cookies, which you can do, uh, as it heats up in the oven, it's gonna spread. If your cookies are spreading too much and they're not holding their shape, it's because of the butter in them. Uh, so my snickerdoodle recipe that I got from my grandma way back in the day was all shortening. <laughs> and as I grew older, I was like, ooh, shortening, gross. Uh, and so I made them with all butter and they like went from these gorgeous, fat, fluffy snickerdoodles to these flat, crispy things. I was like, what went wrong? Of course it was the butter. So. Um, I do love butter flavoring. So a lot of those old recipes that call for all shortening, I'll do half and half to still get some of that butter in there. Um, but shortening has its place in cookies. Um, so I wouldn't just nay say it and say poo poo always. It has its thing. Okay, so if you do decide to do all butter for this recipe, you will, uh, you will get an amazing flavor, but you will definitely get flatter uh, cookies and they will be crispier, a little bit more golden. So I still suggest 
um, still suggest shortening it. For those people who are interested in the butter flavored shortening, I've never been a huge fan personally, but it is kind of an in-between. It doesn't have the high temperature uh, melting rate point that shortening, bowl shortening has, but it definitely holds its shape better than uh, full butter. So it's a good medium. Um, I would just rather do half real butter and half shortening than do all butter flavored shortening. So personal preference, you can totally try both and see what you think. So now we're gonna beat this together. And again, even though I have bowl scrapers, I'm still going to come in here and scrape these sides because bowl scrapers are awesome, but they're not, you know, 100% because if these little plastic scrapers completely touched the side of the bowl, like 100% touched, it would actually inhibit the whisking ability. So it just kind of comes really close. So. going to add, now that that's nice and fluffy, we're going to add an egg uh, and some vanilla. We're going to add a whole teaspoon of vanilla. Sandy, do I ever make divinity? <laughs> that is a loaded question. Oh, those are the wrong measuring spoons again. Um, yes. Uh, my mom had a divinity recipe that she always made every year. This is one teaspoon of vanilla. And, um, and I never really cared for it, honestly. Um, but I decided one year for my daughter's uh, pr Disney Princess Spa birthday party that Divinity would make the perfect Merida Blue Wisps from, um, from Brave. And so I made it, and it broke my mixer. <laughs> so I haven't made it since then. Uh, my sisters who love it, they make it every year, but I just, oh, I just never really loved it that much. Okay, so... Um, Forgot the sugar. <laughs> so we were supposed to mix the sugar and butter together. Now we're gonna add the sugar in with the eggs and vanilla, which is not the right order, but hopefully it'll be okay. That was silly. going to add, oops, got my camera off. <laughs> there we go. We're going to add um, the dry ingredients into this. I'm going to throw that lid on again. out another scoop and create some balls all right so Tucker you're doing a great job thank you so much Arlene what's inspires me um pretty much everything food <laughs> I just really love food um it's definitely a favorite of mine okay so anytime that you um have a recipe that maybe is a little bit on the dry side, I just kind of suggest to go in there and kind of giving it a little bit of a knead just to make sure it's incorporated and you don't like have a little pocket of flour or anything like that. All right, let's get another cookie scoop. Oh. So I have another 
tray filled with parchment paper again. I'm going to move the mixer out of the way again. Oh, the coconut macarons. I was like, what is that? Too many timers on. Move that out of the way. Okay. Let's check on these. Well, they're not quite golden yet, so I'm going to leave them in for another, like, two minutes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to decide if this small is going to be too small. So I'm going to roll a test one and see what I think. Put it on the cookie tray. There you go. And I'm actually going to take um, a glass. I'm going to dip the bottom of the glass in, well, I was going to dip it in flour, but nothing stuck. So um, i flatten it and just see what I think. So, um, yeah, I think that'll be a good size scoop. Maybe now the flour will stick to the bottom of my cup. Scoop a couple more of these. This is when it's nice to have somebody with you because uh, one person can do the rolling and one person can do the flattening. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Duh. Vanilla sugar. I forgot to roll the balls in the vanilla sugar. So let's get that in here. All right, so now this vanilla sugar I made about a month ago. So like the flavor is just awesome right now for this. Now you could also use vanilla sugar in the recipe as well instead of just on the outside. Um, I found that to be a little on the strong side for m some people. So I tend to just use it on the outside, but it personally, I loved it inside as well. So go for it. And this will make squishing it easier to I don't know why I have that bowl so far away from me. Okay, so now is another good time. Uh, Jen, you agree with Margaret, you love my mixer. Thank you, it is a universal mixer by Bosch. So German made, it's amazing. My mom has had hers for 40 years and it still runs perfectly. Uh, my mother-in-law has had hers for almost 50 years and hers runs amazing as well still. In fact, when I lived with her, I used to use it all the time. Um, so it's great. Right now, they have a couple different bundles going on. Uh, and with one of the bundles, the winter bundle, I think, if you use the code Holiday Bosch, you'll get some money off. I will um, add a link in the comments after this um, for you. But they also had, right at Black Friday, they had a baker's bundle that I really, really liked that had a great price on all of the accessories that I really love. So. All right, let's check on those cookies. Oh, and the brown sugar is, ooh. Oh, these look so good. And the brown sugar shortbread looks good too. Okay, so let's take a look at both of these. Here are these brown sugar shortbread, and in just a second, I'm going to put this on a cooling rack, and we're going to cut along those lines. And check out these ones. They look amazing as well. Nice golden color. Okay. Let's finish up with these uh, soft sugar cookies and get them in the oven too. And then we will work on those other ones, and then we still have one more cookie I was going to try to get to before we were done. World's loudest alarm. Um, yeah, so I love Bosch. Um, you're happy to hear from me. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Maybe it's on delay. The closed caption sometimes right before she actually says it. That's funny. Uh, the closed captioning is probably just uh, trying to read, trying to understand what I'm saying. I'm sure it's not 100% accurate because it is live. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's probably just, I think the video is on like a 
90 second delay so it does cause some problems like sometimes i get your comments after i've already finished something or answered already answered something uh do i prefer parchment to sill pat that is a great question um it kind of depends on what i'm making all right so we're going to squish these and i like to squish them until they get a little bit uh, of a crinkle on the outer edge there we go and the sugar kind of helps protect the cookies from sticking too much to the cup, but they do just pop right off if they stick a little bit too much. Uh, of course, now that I've said that, we're going to get one that like sticks really bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, for Silpat Matte works with some things really, really good and some things not. Like I always use parchment when it comes to macarons because otherwise you get like a little hollow thing on your cookies. Uh, so I just kind of experiment and see uh, what works. Anything that I'm cooking with that's super messy, like chicken breasts and stuff like that, I tend to um, use Silpat for. Anything that's more on the dry side, I tend to use hard print for, just because the Silpat kind of has that feel, the greasy feel that I feel like doesn't necessarily react with everything really well. So uh, it depends on the cookie. Some cookies I use it for, some I don't. Um, Kind of depends on the day too. I don't have like a hard fast rule. Okay, so put these in the oven and these also bake at 350 for about 11 to 12 minutes. All right, Ooh, wipe down the counter. Always getting so messy. I had a comment on one of my YouTube videos the other day, one of my first videos. Somebody said, you're, um, Who's the odd couple? The name of the odd couple characters. Anyway, they commented that I was the messy odd couple character and not the not the clean couple character. So, especially in these live videos when things are just moving so fast, it is kind of hard to keep up with it. But I, I try not to be too messy. Okay. Let's oops, wrong camera. Let's this over. And I'm going to grab that parchment corner and go fast. Now, usually, um, I I like to use hmm, I like to use uh, cookie sheets that don't have a lip for most cookies. But I don't have four, and since we're making four, it was easier just to stack them. I needed this, but I like those completely flat cookie sheets. It makes things easier to slide on and off and put them um, on cooling racks. So. Now we're going to take the knife along those lines that we already made and just cut straight down. And then as these cool, they will have a great finished edge. If you wait too long to cut these, they will actually crack because shortbread is a harder cookie. So you don't want to, you want to do this while they're warm. Uh, and not wait. Now I will show you what happens if you didn't create lines beforehand. Hold on one second, I'm finished cutting on the lines and then I will cut off the lines to show you that. And done. Okay. Let's get a little closer. I'm going to cut one of these. So here I don't have a line and I'm cutting. And you can see it actually cuts fairly nice. So you don't have to worry too much about creating those lines. Again, it's just kind of visually to help me um, because these are so hot, especially if you do want to have some kind of design like the fork marks. It's just kind of nice to know. And as I was creating that shape by creating those lines, I also was able to kind of create where I wanted that shape to end. So I'm actually going to cut the end of these cookies off just so I have a couple more perfect edges. And cut this side edge too. This is the OCD side of me. And cut a little bit of this edge off too. And don't worry, nothing gets wasted. We will eat those scraps, but for, um, for ones that I like to give, it's kind of nice to have those knife cuts on every side. So grab the cooling rack and move these cookies onto that so it's faster. I'm also going to grab 
so. I don't want to touch anything hot. I'm also going to take those coconut macarons and put them on the cleaning rack as well. Sandies. Uh, you might know them as um, snowballs or Mexican wedding cookies or I think there's like four other names for them. Like it's crazy as I was researching, as I really got into food and I started researching my old family recipes and kind of figuring out where they came from and, and what their story was because I don't just like making recipes. I like understanding why recipes work why ingredients work, why they do certain things. Anytime that I want to create something new, I'll usually go and find about 10 other recipes and see what they have in common, see what's making them tick, what's making them work, and I try to bring it down to a nice, uh, simple base recipe. But anyway, so I was shocked to discover that what I call Sandy's Almost nobody else in the world calls Sandy's. I don't know where that came from. It was a recipe for my grandma, so somewhere along the line that became the family name for them, um, probably because of their sandy texture. Uh, they're basically a pecan shortbread that you roll in powdered sugar. So they are also, just like our previous recipe, super, super simple. Um, so since my box is still ready, we are going to uh, get out the hand mixer. So I do have a hand mixer, I just don't love using the hand mixer. Um, you're getting a loud static. Is anybody else getting a loud static? No. This one's plugged in, right? Huh. Uh, is anybody else getting a loud static? Let me know and I will unplug. I have four microphones on so I can unplug a couple and see if that helps anything. Um, Grace, some calls them meltaways. Yes, they do. Grace, you love the edges are the best. I know. See, by the time my kids get home, all those edges will be gone because I will have eaten them. <laughs> um, melt in your mouth. Your mom come those sandies too. Yes. I feel a little justified. My family didn't just make up some crazy name. Um, let's go to the play. That's what you're doing right now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you would totally be eating all those edges. Yes. What scoop did I use for the sugar cookies? That is a good question. Uh, for the sugar cookies, I used a small cookie scoop. It's also known as number uh, 60. I want to say it's like, I forget. I always have to look it up how many like teaspoons or tablespoons it is. Um, it's, yeah, a small cookie scoop. There's like a large, medium, and small cookie scoop in sets a lot of the times. I use the large ones for cupcakes. I use the medium and small ones for cookies. So it was the small one that I used. Um, how do I make vanilla sugar? April, I have a whole video on that, but long story short, I take some sugar, I take some vanilla pods, I cut them open, scrape out the beans, and I put the pods and the beans in a food processor with the sugar. I process them up and then I throw them in a container and I leave them for about a month. And then I pull out the pods and I start using the vanilla sugar. So it's amazing. Um, okay, not so much which is when I move. All right, it must be the microphone in my pocket. I will try not to move as much, or I can always just unplug that one. All right, so, ah, Sandies. We're gonna start with those, and the first thing that we're going to do is to beat, um, oh, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> we're going to beat uh, some softened butter and uh, some powdered sugar together. I'm gonna plug in my hand mixer. It's amazing how many ingredients it takes to make four recipes in an hour. Uh, Rosa, how do you get the recipe for the cookies? You are on Facebook, so the links to all the printable recipes on my site is in the video description. If you are on YouTube, all the recipes are right in the YouTube description box. So people always ask me what I love about my Bosch. And one of the things is the, uh, my mixer, is the power. Like, it would take seconds in my big mixer to get this butter and powdered sugar totally soft and creamed. So, I need to buy 
I feel like I need to buy like four more bowls so I can do all of these videos without having to not use my mixer. Okay, uh, anyway, now we're going to add some vanilla. And is anybody else super bummed out by the vanilla shortage? It's causing me lots of problems. All right, so two teaspoons of vanilla. So when a recipe calls for like vanilla extract, I always uh, use real vanilla. Uh, and when like right now there's a huge shortage and real vanilla costs five arms, a leg and three babies, uh, I use like, I double the amount of uh, vanilla that calls for. I love vanilla, so problem of mine. All right, so vanilla and uh, then a tablespoon of water. Uh, show you guys this. Now the water does not like to incorporate with the butter very good. This is another reason I like using the big mixer. Uh, big stand mixers incorporate oils and water together uh, really fast and really good. But this will be okay. All right, you just want to make sure it is nice uh, and creamy. And now we're going to add the flour. Beat that together some more. I tend to pulse it until the butter's more incorporated so that I don't get flour all, oh, so the flour's incorporated, so I don't get flour all over my kitchen. Another reason I like my stand mixer, it has a lid. <laughs> now these are also like the first cookies that we made on the dryer side. I think my assistant did the same thing to me when she was measuring out all these ingredients, I think she high altitude them because this is looking a little drier than normal. So for high altitude, you add extra flour, you take away sugar, um, but in cookies, you don't need, I never high altitude cookies. It's more of like breads and stuff like that. So I'm going to do what we did for the other recipe earlier, and I'm gonna add a little bit of butter to make up for how dry this is. Stand mixers are so messy. Uh, Donna, you make your own vanilla extract. You mean your own vanilla? Like with vodka and vanilla beans? That's not extract, that's like actually vanilla. Extract is when it's like fake flavor and it doesn't use real vanilla. All right, that is looking better. You know what I'm gonna do? This is driving me daddy. I'm going to clean my Bosch and throw it in there real fast. So. Driving me two nuts. Okay, I have all of the sugar cookie dough still in here, so give me just a second. I thought I would be okay with using the hand mixer, but I am not. cookie paddles out instead of the whisks for this. So. Um, if you do only have a hand mixer, you can totally still use this recipe for that. Uh, I would suggest using a bigger bowl than this, just so it kind of controls all the flying from this drier uh, dough. Because all those flyaways just... I'm just looking at my kitchen getting dough everywhere. It's driving my batty. Give it a 
good scrape. And beat it again. Oh, these look so good. I am a pecan. I'm a huge pecan fan. I love pecans. Okay, check that out. This is awesome. We're going to scoop this just like before. And we'll do both. You know what? I think this is a little bit small. I want to use my bigger scoop. Let's try the bigger scoop. The bigger scoop has soap not over it. <laughs> Hold on. Keep losing my towel. The towel is one of those things that you kind of grab as you need it and then you just set it down someplace so I keep losing it. I need like five towels around at all times. All right, let's try this bigger scoop and see what I think of that. Okay, so here's the big scoop and here's the small scoop. So this is a medium sized cookie scoop and this is a small size cookie scoop. And I kind of feel like I want it a little bit in between. So this is when that OCD comes into play. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the small scoop and I'm gonna break it in half and add it to my other small ball and compare that and see what I think. Mm. It's a little bit smaller than the medium sized scoop, but probably not enough to make a difference. So it doesn't really matter that much. All right, so get the bowl out and let's scoop some cookies and get them on a cookie sheet. And let's see, let's check on. Oh, I forgot to put a timer on for the other ones. That's lovely. So here is our vanilla buds. So these are just a little more golden than I like them, but I caught them before they got too bad. Flip it over and see. So yeah, that's really not too bad. Um, I probably would have pulled these out mm, maybe a minute earlier. So. I'm gonna turn the temperature down to 300 because for Sandy's we want it lower. Let's crack this open just a tad bit so it can cool down faster. Move some of stuff out of the way. And wah. And look at the heat. Oh, so much for maintaining cleanliness. This is pretty dirty. All right, so, uh, I don't know what happened to the balls I made. <laughs> there they are. I threw them back in with the dough. All right, so, um, while I'm doing these, it's another good time to answer questions. Uh, Cindy, you think it's my shirt rubbing? Oh, you know what? Microphone actually fell. I'm not quite sure where it went. Oh, it's rubbing against the floor. So there's that. All right, is that better? Now the microphone's not rubbing against the floor. Don't even know when that happened. Okay. So now is a good time to answer some questions. Um, Angie, you made cookies from a bad mix and it flattened out instead of being small and high. Any ideas what? Hold on, the comment got. Uh, what went wrong? All you did was add water, oil, and an egg. Um, what kind of oil did you use? Um, and I probably would have swapped out the oil for, um, for something that hold that's firm when room temperature, like butter or a shortening or something like that. Um, so I just don't love mixes. They don't have enough, uh, you don't have enough control over them like you do when you're making it completely from scratch. Did the box have, um, any alternate instructions for like high altitude or for thicker fatter, stuff like that. Um, those are really important to pay attention to if you live someplace that's a little bit different. 
Um, but I'm the one who totally failed the store challenge on the Food Network competition that I was on because I'm just not good with store doughs, apparently. They're my nemesis. Um, Susan, yes, way better, thanks. You're welcome. I hope I wasn't blasting your ear too badly. Bad audio is the worst. Um, vegetable, you realized yesterday you needed vanilla, so thanks for the heads up. Yes. If you get your vanilla at Costco, you will be shocked that what used to be a $15 bottle is now like $35. It's ridiculous. Uh, if you can find somebody who like, like I have my hairdresser, her husband sells Mexican vanilla. So that's a little bit more pure and the Mexican vanilla bean fields weren't quite as effective though as some of the other vanilla bean fields. So I don't know. I just keep thinking how much longer can this last before they get the vanilla harvest back up again. So I'm running out of my vanilla beans that I'd stockpiled before it all happened. So I'm getting a little bit panicky myself. Cause what will I do without fresh vanilla? Uh, I will say my Costco, I live next to the world's largest Costco and they sell uh, imitation vanilla that's this big. So I bought this when vanilla prices went up because I like, like I said, if I'm using imitation vanilla, I'll double what the recipe calls for to get that better vanilla flavor. And look how much I've gone through in like eight months. <laughs> yeah, it's almost time for another one. Um, real vanilla is the way to go, Donna, for sure. What's the difference between real and extract vanilla for baking? Pros and cons. All right, Renee, real vanilla is made with real vanilla. Uh, vanilla beans that are then soaked in vodka or rum. Uh, vodka is the traditional. If you want another unique flavor for your vanilla, you can do it in rum. You can do it in, um, uh, oh, there's, a, and there's a couple different hard liquors that you can mix in with vanilla. Anyway, imitation vanilla is a fake flavoring. That, I mean, it, that's exactly what it is. It's not made with vanilla. It's a synthesized chemical flavoring that imitates <laughs> the flavor of real vanilla. But personally, it's never strong enough as real vanilla is. And so uh, that's why I prefer using real vanilla for recipes. And then again, I'll double it if it calls for imitation to get a better flavor. But real vanilla is a better flavor enhancer because it's a natural flavor enhancer versus the chemical version. But uh, I know some people who um, who are super anti using alcohol at, of any kind. And so they prefer using extracts. But what most people don't know is even extracts are made with alcohol and have quite a high alcohol content level. Um, so don't let the fact that real vanilla is made with alcohol stop you because the imitation is as well. Uh, just at the end of the day, it's just a flavor profile. I'm not a super taster by any sense. So I'm sure somebody who is a super taster can really tell the difference. Personally, um, I, I just like it better, but it's, I don't necessarily, I can't necessarily tell you the difference. Like if I eat a cookie that has it and a cookie that doesn't, I can't necessarily tell you which one was made with the real and which one was made with the imitation. I can just tell you which one didn't have a strong enough vanilla flavor for me. Usually that means imitation, but not always. Some people are just more heavy handed with vanilla than others are. All right. So these are all balled up and I'm going to throw them in the oven and it's cooled down 300 degrees. Okay. And these cook, I forget how long, for 20 minutes. So we might not necessarily see the end of the Sandies, but what I'm going to do now, um, whoa, the camera's not changing. I keep pushing it and it's not changing. Uh, so now I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna melt some chocolate and we're gonna finish off the shortbread cookies uh, and the coconut macaroons. So you don't even wanna see the mess of all the dishes over here on the side that I've building up. Okay. Oops, sorry, that was really loud. I'm not trying to blast everybody's eardrums. Okay. Cleaning. Okay. Uh, Yes, there is a difference between imitation vanilla and pure vanilla extract. Um, what is the best way to store vanilla beans in vodka <laughs> for vanilla? Um, no, um, I had a contact with a company who made vanilla, made high-end vanilla, and they just sent me a big, huge 
jar about this big filled with vanilla beans and I just keep them sealed in the jar. So as long as they're sealed, they'll actually last for quite a long time. Um, but you just don't want them to dry out. So keep them in like a glass jar or I double bag it in baggies sometimes. Uh, I found the glass jars for me, I trust the most. So that's what I keep mine in. Any advice for home bakers thinking about making this a business? Um, don't do it in Utah. <laughs> um, uh, see, I'm the person who decided not to turn it into a business. Like I still make treats for family and friends, but um, I don't really take on clients anymore. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you're looking to get out of baking. Um, chocolate. Um, cutting board and knife. So I ran out of my chocolate wafers and you do not want to melt chocolate chips because uh, chocolate chips are made with an ingredient that keeps them holding their shape at high temperatures so that when you pull out your cookies, chocolate chips still are shaped like chocolate chips. So they don't melt well. So I don't recommend them for any recipe in any ganache, uh, chocolate for dipping, uh, chocolate drips, anything where you're melting chocolate, I do not recommend chocolate chips. I recommend chocolate wafers or chocolate bars. So that's what I'm using today uh, as a chocolate bar I'm gonna chop. So, uh, so for questions about making baking a business, um, um, start small. I mean, with social media, it's easy to gain a following like um, Instagram and find people who are looking for bakers there um, using hashtags and stuff like that. Word of mouth, your, offer it to your neighbors. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I had a friend who kind of at the same time as me got into cake decorating and where I went the route of deciding to keep it out of my house and to keep it small, she went the route as she got more and more popular and got more and more requests. She went the route where she started getting asked to, um, like me, got asked to make more and more and more. And I just hit the point where I just started saying no. I just am like, okay, I'm willing to do, you know, one client cake a month and that's it. And once that's booked, I'm done. I want to spend the rest of my time with my family. I want to grow my blog. I want to grow YouTube. Um, I don't want to be in the kitchen all the time making goodies for other people. Um, so my friend though, she went the route when she started getting more and more requests like me, she went and did a whole bakery. She started a cake decorating business. Um, and after a couple years, she actually sold it. And when I asked her about it, cause I was like, oh, that was just kind of, it was nice to see the road that could have been, the road less traveled, you know, in my case. And she just said that she ended up becoming a businesswoman and she never decorated cakes anymore. And she never baked anymore because she was busy running the business and she was hiring other people constantly. Um, and that she realized that her husband had a great job. They didn't really need the money. It was a hobby that kind of became more because it could, which is exciting. Um, and just she realized that she was spending all this time running a business that she didn't really need and she was missing her kids grow up. And so she closed it. She had four locations. She won Cupcake Wars. She was like doing amazing. And she's just like, I'm done and she closed it. So I was sad for her when, when she went that route because I don't feel like it has to be all or nothing, but I was also relieved knowing that I had made the right choice for me, if that makes sense. All right, so I have cut up this chocolate from this bar. We're gonna scoop it up and we're gonna put it in this bowl and we're gonna microwave it. Okay, this is gonna make a mess if I don't get all this. Okay, and then for microwaving it, uh, you can heat it over a double broiler, which is what I like if I'm making large amounts of chocolate. But um, if you're just making small amounts of chocolate, then the microwave is just fine. You just wanna do it for short intervals. And I actually have a melt chocolate button in my microwave. So I'm gonna use that. A little cleaning. If you do not have a melt chocolate button on your microwave, which a lot of people don't have, uh, I would just do like 30 second, 30 second intervals on high, or you could do like a minute on like 50% power, 
and then stir it and then do 30, uh, 30 second intervals after that until you hit the melting point that you're looking for. You also don't have to uh, completely melt the chocolate in the microwave because the heat of the chocolate will actually continue to melt itself as you stir it. So you're not looking to get it perfectly smooth in the microwave, you'll overcook it that way. You're just looking until it's small enough chunks that as you continue to stir it, they will melt themselves. Okay, Katie, your mom and you started baking when your daughter was born, you make cakes for her birthday. Sorry, see more. And your friends come find out you love and enjoy it and you're good at it. Um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom and support my kids, and so I just decided to limit it and keep doing it out of my house, and that's what's worked for me. I know for a lot of people, having that bakery that they go to and that location is really key for them. Uh, Generate Cakes up in Canada, I think, has done a really good job having a location, but again, she's also young and not married and doesn't have any kids to go home to, so for me, it was more important to be home with my children, so that's why I made that choice. Uh, Donna Wolf, you love vanilla paste. Yes, vanilla bean paste is amazing. Uh, the static is better. Thanks so much. Have I tried vanilla paste? Yes, I love it. Uh, you know, Donna, from, I don't really love the flavor of Mexican vanilla either. It's a little too uh, alcoholic for me, if that makes any sense. Do I sell cookies online? Nope. I have never sold anything online about food wise, just because there's a lot of laws that govern sending food over state lines and I don't want to mess with it. So it's not worth it. Uh, the cost of doing that, you have to be doing so much to justify the cost, and I just don't do that much, so it's not worth it for me, which is why I like having the website and the YouTube channel, because I like to teach people to fish instead of fishing for them. <laughs> it's kind of how that works out for me. Uh, you like peanut butter blossom cookies. It said no changes for high altitude. Oh, that was a little button shiny. Yeah, peanut butter cookies definitely should not be shiny. I would try making them... Um, with butter instead of oil. All right. Okay, so this is nice and shiny. And let's come a little closer. Oh, can't be moving. Sorry, I hope I don't make it really nauseous. You can see it's not totally melted yet, but because it's so warm, it won't take much stirring for this to get totally smooth. And I like dark chocolate, so this is dark chocolate, but of course you can use milk or semi-sweet or bittersweet or dark or whatever you like. Just make sure that when you're doing chocolate for dipping or for melting or for drizzling, you're using a higher quality chocolate. I know that that scares a lot of people because it tends to be more expensive, um, but it doesn't have to be. I like uh, Trader Joe's chocolate is actually amazing quality and a rock in price uh, if you live near Trader Joe's, just saying. That is what this is. All right, almost completely melted. And let's start dipping some cookies. Mwah. All right, so, <laughs> I didn't spill any. All right, so here are the coconut macaroons that we made earlier. I'm gonna push them off to the side. So I'm just going to dip it in there like that. And let's get a little closer. Oop, that's as close as I can get. So I like to dip the bottom half in and pull it out. I like to let it go up the sides a little bit and then shake it off so that we don't aren't gonna get a huge puddle. And then put it on the parchment paper. Again, kind of dip it so it goes part way up. And drizzle it off. And then drop it on the parchment paper. So you can end that here or you could get a, like a fork or a piping bag and you can actually drizzle some chocolate on top too. And this tends to be a little bit messier. And if you want your chocolate to be thinner, you can add a little bit of oil to it. Just not dairy, not like milk or anything like that. Or you could, if you really want it to be precise, like and I'm really trying to be pretty because I'm giving them as gifts, I'll use a piping bag so that I can just cut a nice small hole. I can squeeze out the drizzle really nice. Uh, it works better than the fork in that case. So for the shortbread cookies, ooh, these are still a little warm, but I do the same thing for them. So let's 
Okay. So if I'm doing something that's long, like the shortbread cookies, and I want to dip it, what I'll actually usually do is use a deeper, uh, a deeper container, like a two cup container. But since this is what I used for this, <laughs> and I tend to, to kind of keep it pretty, I keep go at an angle, and I'll do the same thing that we just did, and that is drizzle off uh, as much as I can without letting the cookie break, All right? And then lay it down on the parchment paper and repeat. Mm. So, okay, we are halfway, we're halfway through cooking the sandies and as soon as they come out and they're nice and warm, we're gonna immediately roll them in extra powdered sugar. So I am just gonna keep uh, dipping cookies in chocolate and answering questions um, for anybody who wants to stick around and then I will break apart all the cookies and show everybody the final products. So I will just continue answering questions for the next nine minutes. All right, uh, Michelle, that looks delicious. You're gonna make this at Christmas. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, oh yeah, I wanna hear what everybody makes, like what is your must make mandatory Christmas treat? So I make these cookies. I make uh, toffee. Uh, I make um, eggnog, of course. I make um, caramels, homemade caramels. Um, I might make my marshmallow caramels this Christmas and hand that out for presents. Um, I tend to make different neighbor gifts every year just because I like to change things up. Uh, like I'll change it up like every three years or so. So one of my favorites to do is to make my homemade caramel sauce and my homemade chocolate hot fudge sauce and can those and give those to my neighbors. It's one of my favorite things to give. That's a really fun one. My sister always does the homemade caramels just cause they're nice to be able to give those individually wrapped treats. Um, uh, I also make fudge, like three different kinds of fudge. Um, I like to make, I just like to make a lot so that I can eat like most of it, but I can still have plenty to give away without like going, oh man, I gave away my favorite or something like that. Um, caramel brownies. It is one of the very few things that I still use a cake mix for, although I'm working on uh, creating that without a cake mix. Just my sister asked why. I'm like, just for fun, just to say that I did it. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but those are some of our main ones. Oh, sugar cookies, duh. Uh, and gingerbread houses. We already did that this year because um, we do that with my uh, nieces for cousin Christmas. Okay. Uh, Susan cookies look amazing and perfect. You can't wait to try it. Thank you for the demonstration. You are so welcome. Amber. Hi, nice to see you. We're right at the end. Um, do you decorate cookies with royal icing? I do not. That's a great question. I, um, I mean, I like how the royal icing gets nice and hard so that you can, um, you know, easily stack it or bag it or give it to people. But I personally can't stand eating royal icing. I don't, I don't like fearing I'm going to break a crown <laughs> every time I bite a cookie. Um, so I don't, I don't, mine is not a royal icing recipe. It does get a crust on it, the recipe that I use, but you can still easily crush it if you're not careful. So they still don't really stack the cookies, but they do get a crust on them. So I can do those same techniques with like the color flow and stuff like that. Cause I like that look. Uh, the video that I did last year where I talk about sugar cookies, you can actually leave it on the thicker side and it's a spreadable frosting that's great for little kids who just wanna get their knife and their sprinkles. Um, but yeah, all right, I'm gonna chop up some more chocolate because I need to melt some more. Oh man, I that's the only negative to chocolate. It's delicious and I love it and I feel like I have, I, I have chocolate everywhere. <laughs> Literally have chocolate everywhere. Okay, chop some more chocolate. Um. Heather, you like to make a homemade party mix. Peanut butter fudge, oh, peanut butter fudge is so good. Chocolate fudge, chocolate dipped cherry mice. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Snickerdoodles, peanut butter cookies, chocolate chip cookies, and sometimes peanut brittle. That sounds like an awesome collection of holiday goodies. Cheesecakes, Texas style, no sour elements. Interesting. Um, Amplet cookies, I do not have a good recipe for that. I will work on that. Um, your hubby and I are loving the hair. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Uh, for our family pictures this year, we went with navy and burgundy. So I had to color my hair to match family pictures. 
Um, make this. Is that a roll pour microwave? I don't know. I scraped off the logo because I didn't like it in my YouTube videos. <laughs> so I took a, a, a thing and I scraped it right off the front of the microwave. Um, thanks you for sharing. Love and bless. We agreed. Chocolate, uh, Trader Joe's chocolate is fabulous. Ugh, right? Amen. Uh, let's just make it. What other chocolate brands do you use but try Trader Joe's? That is a great question. Um, I like uh, Ghirardelli's and Guitards. I like Calibit and I like Merkins. And those are all the brands um, that I can get at the local store that sells a lot of chocolate. So I like all of those. You just wanna make sure that it's a really high quality, good melting chocolate um, and not like a, not like just a candy bar, if that makes sense. Uh, I like the wafers because then I don't have to chop and they melt really nicely. Um, I do not use like candy melts, right? Like there's a place for candy melts and I do use them, but not when it comes to like chocolate. Chocolate flavored candy melts from like Wilton are not actually chocolate. Um, so I'll use candy melts for making like um, modeling chocolate um, or for, um, kind of it. <laughs> I use it for making modeling chocolate. It's really good for modeling chocolate. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's actually a quite a few good brands of chocolate out there. So just whatever you can find locally, that's not too pricey is a good way to go. Uh, my local store is called Gigi's and they do ship, but I'm sure, I mean, everybody should have a chocolate store close enough to them to get that. Uh, you make biscotti, Italian chocolate cookies, thumbprint, coconut macaroons, and others. Nice, Susan. That sounds great. Like, there's just not much better than baking. And at the holidays, it's like allowed without people going, well, why are you trying to make me fat? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm trying to make people fat year round. Kind of my thing. You know, because if everybody's fat, then I don't have to lose weight. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. I don't know. I don't really believe in dieting. Because there's only so many bites in your life, and every bite I take is that much closer to my last. I want to enjoy them all. Um, sour cream sugar cookies. My um, my sugar cookie recipe has sour cream in it too. My cutout sugar cookies. Um, let's see, what am I missing? Um, the dawn sounds delicious. It does. All right. So, what else? What else are is everybody making for the holidays? Okay, here's another question for you. What does everybody make for their um, Christmas dinner? Are you a ham family? Are you a goose family? I'm a turkey family. Turkey is one of my all time favorite foods. And so I like to enjoy it. Oops, I went past the chocolate. Um, I like to enjoy it as often as I can. So I make it for Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter. And usually like one or two other times during the year. Um, my kids like turkey. They don't love turkey like I do. But they do love my turkey and wild rice soup and my turkey pot pie. So they are willing to put up with it to get those recipes out of it. So ribs and ducks. Oh, Margaret. That sounds good. You know, I love duck. But I've never wanted to waste it on my kids. But they're all old enough now and they appreciate food enough now. I should, I should do a duck. That's a great suggestion. And I have a smoker now, so I can make really good ribs now. Uh, you just got your turkey today because you're having early Christmas on Saturday with your dad said, Angie, awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only turkey lover. Um, ham family. All right, so if you're a ham family, Mackenzie, what are your sides? Do you do the, the is funeral potatoes a thing everywhere or is that just a Utah thing? All right. Um, when I do ham, I do um, homemade biscuits and funeral potatoes. Ooh. All right. Okay, not quite ready, but I'm going to get the powdered sugar ready for these cookies. Clean up our chocolate mess. And then we'll be ready to show off all of our final cookies. And I can eat cookies for dinner and you guys can all go eat real food. <laughs> I know, the reason I like to do these on Tuesday nights is because that's the night my kids are with their dad. So one, I don't get as interrupted as much. And two, means I don't have to make dinner so I can just eat whatever treats that I make here for you guys. 
All right, powdered sugar. And some parchment paper. Okay. Oh. All right, here we go. Look, oh, they smell so good. Oh, they smell so good. So you want the bottom to be just starting to get slightly golden like that, and then you wanna pull them out immediately. And what we wanna do next is, oh, all this stuff is too far in the way. Okay, get some parchment paper ready to go. Get a bowl of powdered sugar, and we're gonna immediately pop that in. Set. Hold on, I'm clearing everything so we don't keep beeping at us. Get a fork. All right, get a fork because these cookies are still delicate. And so if we're too handsy with them, they could break. All right. And whoop. put them over here and get another one. Whew, a little warm. Well, my sisters and I, we loved making cookies when we were growing up and we used to compete to see who could put cook fresh, hot, right out of the oven cookies in their mouth and eat it without spitting it out. I think uh, we lost like multiple taste buds doing that growing up. But the funny thing is when we bake together, even now, we still do it which is probably super silly of us, but I don't know. If you don't be silly with your family, who are you silly with, right? Okay. And you wanna make sure that you do this while they're hot, otherwise the powdered sugar won't stick. Uh -huh, so good. I love these cookies. Okay. Um, this Time to cook you like, oh, crowned, uh, crown roast of pork for your family. Nice. That sounds amazing. So how many people are hosting Christmas? How many people are visiting for Christmas? And how many people um, do their own Christmas? So I am anti taking kids around on Christmas. So we always do our own Christmas. But we do like, like last weekend we did cousin Christmas where we got together with nieces and nephews. And we made tamales and gingerbread houses. Um, so we still do the family stuff, but not on the actual Christmas day. Because, oops, I meant to do that. Because I like staying in my pajamas, eating cinnamon rolls, and playing all the new board games that we got. So we're a board game family. And I don't like racing around on the holiday. I like having that day where I sit home with the kids. Um, and then I do my big dinner actually the night before, on Christmas Eve. I used to do Christmas day dinner, and I just realized, why am I spending all day baking when I want to be sitting around playing video games or in board games with my kids. So, um, so we switched it and now I do my big dinner on Christmas Eve and then we enjoy leftovers on Christmas day. So I don't have to bake at all. Just watch movies and play games in my PJs. Ah, uh, Margaret, you are hosting. Nice. Uh, potatoes, green bean casseroles and gravy. Nice. Any tips on pre-making cookie dough and freezing it? Yeah. You can totally pre-make cookie dough and freeze it. Uh, all right, so for tips, what I recommend is you take your cookie dough balls and you put them on a cookie sheet that will fit inside your freezer and you make sure that they're not touching and you freeze them. Once they're totally frozen, then you can take the balls and you can um, put them in a bag touching, no problem, but you need to freeze them individually first um, and then they'll be able to last. Now my sugar cookies, my roll out sugar cookies, you can, I freeze that just as a block and then I roll it fresh and let it come to room. I let it thaw in the fridge and then I roll it fresh. But for anything that needs to be a ball shape before cooking, yeah, I totally freeze it individually. Then I keep it in a, like a double freezer Ziploc bag. And then, um, and then I pull it out and I let it thaw while the oven's preheating. And then I can bake just a couple cookies at a time. Okay, these are all done. So it's time to look at all of our cookies. Let's get a cute little plate and put some cookies on it. Oh, I should have grabbed, 
to grab one of my Christmas plates, but they're way over there on the other side of the table. And Okay, oh, and all my cookies are still chocolatey mess. This chocolate hasn't set yet, so, you know, there's that. Okay. Get our little, ooh, hot sample plate. Okay. So, time for the final presentation. I'm trying to get everything out of the way so you don't just see the whole mess in the camera. Mm. Well, that's not perfect, but it'll do. All right, so we have, whoop. Kind of got that out of the way there. And there we go. Got that out of the way now. Okay. Here are the four fast and easy cookies that we made today in not too much time at all. Uh, Angie, do you need to cover it while it's freezing? Nope, I just throw it in the freezer, let it freeze overnight, and then the next morning they're ready to put in balls. So I don't bother, but yeah, you can. I just don't usually bother. You love freezing cookie dough balls for fast cookies. Me too, Sunshine Baker. I used to make like a quadruple batch of my cookies and freeze them, and then I'd, I would go to get cookies and they'd be all gone. My kids would eat them frozen. Uh, you're traveling up way up north to get away from home. Nice. How often do I do these live shows? Um... Uh, the plan is to do them weekly, but with the holidays, it's been a little bit crazy. So starting in January, it'll definitely be weekly. I'm going to try to do it a couple more times before the end of the year. So we will see. Okay, so let's check out our final cookie. So this is the one that we started with, the brown sugar, oh, come on, the brown sugar shortbread. So, mm. oh, this is a good crunch. Okay. Here is a close up of that. Mm. Sorry, it's not quite focusing on the right spot. There we go. So you can see that texture. It's nice and crunchy, uh, but without being too dry, because that's the worst, right? Is when a cookie is too dry. But it breaks nicely and has a decent crunch. And as the chocolate sets, that'll get a little bit better. So next up we made the coconut macaroons. So, mm. oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. so here's the texture of those. Let's break a little bit more off so you can see that more evenly. So these are great. I like a mounded like this because then they get that great crunch on the outside. Oh, that was too big of a bite. <laughs> they have a great crunch on the outside but they're still nice and soft in the inside. When you flatten them too much, and they're mostly just crunchy, so that's a personal preference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wash the chocolate off. Okay. Go with the vanilla bean sugar cookies. Come on. Focus. Oh, I see what's going on. My focus spot isn't centered. There we go. And now because I overcooked these a little bit, they're going to be a little bit more crunchy than normal. There we go. But, oh, they still taste amazing. But they're definitely not soft. But they're, because on my blog, these are under soft sugar cookies. And the other day somebody told me they're like, I made these, but they weren't that soft. So I wanted to make them again. I'm like, why would I have called them soft? Because they're definitely a crunchier cookie on the outside. They do, when you don't overcook them, have a softer inside, but they do satisfy that sweet, crunchy craving that I get all the time. And I love that vanilla bean sugar. So good. Okay, final cookie. It's the hot, warm, whoo, sandy. Mmm. <laughs> Close these. Hmm. Oh, I just breathed in powdered sugar. <coughs> um, this is definitely still soft. Like these need to set and cool down. But oh, they taste so good. So good. And my sister says that she actually makes these now with it. She 
It takes a little mound of the dough and takes a chocolate uh, Hershey Kiss. And she wraps around a Hershey Kiss and bastes them that way. I love them just the way they are. If I was going to add a chocolate element to these, I think I would stir in mini chocolate chips at the same time I'm stirring in the pecans and go that way. I don't, but I also don't love Hershey chocolate. So like the idea of a chocolate, a big Hershey kiss in here is not appetizing to me, but that is an option for those of you who love like those uh, blossom cookies. You can do the same kind of effect with these, but bake it in, bake it inside. So it'll be that gooey chocolatey center inside of this. So there we go. <laughs> Four different kinds. Oh my word. Such a mess. Four different kinds of really fast and easy holiday cookies. And I don't know how long it's been because mm, I don't see a timer on here, but um, okay, it's been an hour and a half and I've made all of these cookies in that time. So think how fast you could make just one of these batches. I like to do like mm, 10 to 15 holiday recipes in a day. And I like to get my whole family involved. So one person is rolling up the dough. One person is rolling them in the sugar. One person is, you know, I like working on stations. I feel like it's really fun. We listen to Christmas music and enjoy that. But um, as you can see, these just don't take that long and they make great treats for neighbors or if you're like me, treats for yourself. <laughs> uh, I hope you're all having happy holidays. I have uh, another week of my kids being in school and then I get a couple weeks of playtime, which I am so excited about. So hopefully you guys all have some magnificent plans. I will stay on for a couple more minutes and answer any questions that I might've missed. Um, but happy holidays, good night, and I will be live again next Tuesday. So let me know in the comments if there's something specific you'd like to see. I was just gonna go for a couple other holiday treats, but I'm happy to make something more specific if anybody has some requests. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Okay, let's see what I missed. Um, thank you for sharing the cookies. You are so welcome. Glad you enjoy them. Do I let them thaw before baking? Uh, I just let them thaw while the oven is preheating and my oven takes a little bit longer to preheat. Uh, if you, I, you either want to cook them completely frozen, frozen cookie dough balls, or you want to cook them completely thawed. What you don't want is them to be partially thawed with a frozen center because that will create misshape in cookies. So I, depends on how hungry I am and how many I'm making. If I'm just cooking two for myself, I totally just throw two in frozen. If I'm like trying to get the whole batch out and cooking for people, then I let them thaw completely so that they all bake the same way. So I just get them out like an hour before, let them thaw and then go through baking them. So that's a great question. Susan, they are gorgeous and perfect. Thank you. They look amazing, yay. Uh, you are going to your cousins on Christmas day and staying home in PJs, good job. You're hosting, Angie's hosting. I really enjoy hosting, I do. I tend to host Thanksgiving though, and I tend to have smaller Christmases, um, mostly because my parents like going to my sister's house <laughs> because she's a little cleaner than me. <laughs> I mean, I, get, I have the cooking going for me, but... Um, um, tamales, yes. Uh, tacos, Spanish rice, guacamole, salsa, and oh, that sounds so good. I have like six more tamales in my fridge from the last batch we just made, and then I'm gonna have to make some more. They're like literally the perfect food. Um, you just got your turkey today, having early Christmas. I got that. Come in. Sorry, I think a neighbor's here. Um, I'll show you. Cookies look amazing. Can I try? Okay, I think I answered all of those questions. Let's see if there's any over here that I didn't get. Thank you for sharing your gif. Have a wonderful Christmas. What do you think of almond bark? Um, I don't use it for cooking or baking um, at all. There is a place for it. There are certain like Christmas candies that do really well with those almond barks or like those Wilton candy melts versus traditional chocolate. But it's that it's those recipes that need to be able to set firmer and be harder and you're not looking for that melty chocolate experience in those i want to say like avalanche bars and stuff like that do really well so it just depends on the recipe the, they are made for a specific purpose and when you're using it for that purpose i think they're great they're just not my go-to especially not when i'm looking for chocolate um oh, i always host okay i think i got to all the questions i think we're done so i will see you next week happy holidays and yeah thanks for joining me I enjoyed it.